Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another look at the presidential elections and the... the t wow, sorry about that. The 2020 uh, race. And honestly, I'm not even sure um, what to really talk about today because... We've got some pretty bad situations going on across the country. Um, you know, any hope that any looting and rioting, listen, the protests, like if any and all peaceful protests, I will, you know, I'm, I, I may not agree with what they're protesting for and I'm not passing judgment on any protests, whether or not I agree with it or don't agree with it. I, you know, I don't care. Um, but as long as you're being peaceful, you'll at least get my sympathy for wanting to get change. But the problem is situation in Minneapolis and L.A. and Atlanta and Chicago and New York City and a bunch of other places, District of Columbia, it has gone far beyond peaceful protests. It is rioting. It is looting. It is violent and it is not seeking to affect political change in a positive beneficial or rational manner it is seeking to topple all existing structures steal what you can and it's just people being angry for the sake of people being angry and if you're in one of these cities that is being affected by any rioting um, take any and all precautions you need keep yourself safe stay out of areas where there is any sort of conflict going on and you know, just hang tight. Um, now, one thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to talk about the electoral effect of these riots, at least not until we get more information, because there's speculation on both sides that this is going to help both sides. You know, there are conservatives who are saying, yeah, this is going to show people that uh, the radical left is causing all sorts of chaos and they're going to vote for a law and order candidate. And while there is certainly precedent in that regard, uh, look at 1968 for a good example. We can't prove that. Then there are going to be Democrats who are saying, see, this is just another case of institutional racism by the police. And that's going to drive more and more voters to the Democratic Party. And we're going to vote out Donald Trump. And we're going to change America. And we're going to implement Medicare for all. And free college. And we're going to get rid of guns. And Until we get more information on the situation, we're not we're we're not going to know. In other news, there was actually some happy news over the weekend. Uh, we successfully launched a rocket into space that was crewed from the Kennedy Space Center, at Cape Canaveral, Florida. Um, it is a positive step in the right direction in terms of space exploration and scientific advancement. And I'm very thrilled to see that it continue that that we can still do that. You know, uh, I I think it's I think space exploration is wonderful. I think it's something we need, and I am all in favor of increased space exploration. I want to see a person on Mars by the time I, by the time it's time for me to leave this world. I want to see I want to see I want to see us reach Mars. And I want the Amer I want us Americans to be the ones to do it. You know, I want to go back to the, I I want to see us back on the moon by by twenty thirty. You know, 
I hope that's not too much to ask. <laughs> but, you know, later this week, uh, we're going to be uh, talking about Minnesota as a swing state. And, unfortunately, I will have to start making some consideration towards the electoral effects of these riots because of that. Um, but I'm going to try and take a very sober and very cautious view about what I think will happen because at the end of the day we still don't know we still don't have all the information um, and another video uh, and another thing I do have a slight correction to make from a previous video um, in the Kosciuszko video I stated that Poland uses the euro instead of their native currency the Zwoti and Turns out uh, it was an inaccuracy. They still use these Zwoti and uh, are not part of the Eurozone. Um, the European Union is a gigantic mess. And I will always get the Schengen area, the Eurozone, and the EU confused. Anyway. Moving on, there are a few states on this that are not... This is kind of just a broad overview that I've left a bunch of states as toss-ups. There are a lot of people who are going to say, oh, New Mexico and Virginia, they're not up for grabs. And there are going to be people saying, oh, come on. What about Texas and Georgia and Missouri? And I did see a poll that had Missouri pretty close, but they didn't weight it properly, and I think there's only three counties in Missouri that vote Democratic with any regularity, and that's the county that is centered on St. Louis, the county that is centered on Kansas City, and one of the, like, there's, there's just not that much blue in Missouri, so I... No, I, I don't. I don't think Missouri is going to be competitive. I think that poll was just horribly inaccurate. Uh, and of course, when you looked at the cross tabs, what did they do? They waited by census data and not expected turnout. And they did a few other things that I was not happy with, but that was the base one. But I think this is a reasonable look at what the competitive states for this uh, for November are going to be. Um, and these are states that you should probably be spending money on, um, or if you're a candidate. And one of the important things to do is try and focus on states that have a high probability of being tipping point states. So states like Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Florida, Minnesota, those five, six, seven states, those are going to be the ones where you're going to want to spend the absolute most time campaigning. Obviously, don't forget Nevadas and Coloradas and New Mexicos, your Virginias, your Ohio's, Iowa's, the second district in both Nebraska and Maine, um, New Hampshire. You know, don't forget the other swing states and even a few potential states on both sides, regardless of party. But focus on tipping point states, states that would be, that if they voted for you, would put you over the top, assuming a normal electoral map. So, assuming, you know, uh, assuming that, say, this is the, I'll leave this, this is our, this is what we'll call our normal map and these will be the swing states well a republican is going to get have to get ohio and florida in order to win that's just guaranteed so any republican candidate needs to be focusing on those four states minnesota wisconsin michigan pennsylvania along with making sure that they secure ohio north carolina and florida a democrat on the other hand can win without Florida or Ohio. It's a little bit difficult, and they're going to have to play a much broader range. 
than the Republican would. Because the Republican only needs to win one of these four in order to win. Now, are some more likely than others? Of course. Pennsylvania and Wisconsin are by far more likely than just, uh, you know, one of those two or both are far more likely than just Michigan or just Minnesota because of the partisanship of each of those states. I'll actually toss in Iowa. But the reality is that you need to be focusing on those tipping point states. And you need to be trying to find reasonable ways to expand the battleground. For example, it, do, it, it actually does make sense for Republicans to be spending money in New Mexico. It's not a safe, it's not a 100% safe blue state. It's a very, it, it definitely has a heavy Democratic lean, but it's not impossible for a Republican to win New Mexico. And if they can make polling look close there, they're going to force the Democrats to spend money there, which is more, which is less money that's going to be spent on larger swing states. And is there a path to victory where New Mexico is a critical state that the Republicans would need? I'm, again, going to assume Ohio, Iowa, North Carolina, and Florida vote for the Republicans, along with that second district in Maine. Need to find... It would involve... It would be a very weird map, for sure. Um, maybe I could see one where the, the Republicans also pick up Nevada. That might be a more likely situation than Maine and New Hampshire, Maine at large and New Hampshire. That said, it is a very peculiar map, and I'm not sure it's all that likely, so. Could it happen? Yes. Will it happen? Uh, I doubt it. But it doesn't hurt to spend money there. So, anyway. I want to thank everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you like the content, likes, comments, subscriptions always do help. And uh, I greatly appreciate it. And again, if you're in a city that is facing some level of turmoil, uh, stay safe and, uh, you know, just stay safe. Anyway. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.